welcome to my channel. Welcome to today's video. Today's video is going to be another installment of Shop My Stash. So that is a monthly series that I do here on my channel where I pull out products, try them, test them, use them for the month, see if I still love them. Then I come back, report to you on my findings, whether I'm going to keep them, declutter them, etc. And then we turn around and pick out new products together for the next month. Pretty straightforward. So if you like Shop My Stash videos, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't yet. I would love it if you stick around. But with all that, let's just get started talking about all these products. All right, so I like to go in order of application when talking about these products. I am wearing 90% of them today, but everything that I'm wearing is always listed in the description box below. Let's just start with primer. So I have the I'm Uni Watery Rose Makeup Base. This is a very interesting product and I'm glad I got some use out of it. It kind of gives me what I think the Huda Beauty Blur Jam would be like. It does very much smell like rose and I used quite a bit of this. I mean, I used it every single time I did my makeup this past month, so I feel like I got some good use. It's a nice blurring kind of silicone-y primer. I wouldn't say this is the most pore blurring primer. You really just kind of put this all over your face rather than just target your pores like the Benefit Professional. But I really enjoyed this. I picked this up on Yes Style. I did a whole Yes Style haul. Any related videos will be linked down below as well. And I'm just glad I got some more use out of it. I'm happy to like see some progress and that it looks used. That's the point of this series. So excited to put this one back and pull out a new one, but I think I just got a better feel for this and overall really happy that I have it. The next up is foundation. I usually in this category pull three, one that's just a known favorite that I like to get more use out of, one that maybe my memory's not so great, I don't remember it, and then a discontinued foundation to try and get some use. For some reason last month, I was feeling like pulling four, so I did. My rules can change. I mean, I do what I want really, but normally I try to stick to three. Let's just go over them though. The one that I'm wearing today is this one. This is the Dr. Jart BB Beauty Balm. I have the shade light medium. I think this only comes in two shades. I really, really like this. I knew that I liked this. I've used quite a bit of it. I've actually, I was thinking that this was almost empty because when I was putting it on the back of my hand, it started to sputter, but there's actually still quite a bit of product left in here. It is 40 ml, so it's almost like one and a half times a full like standard foundation. So I have quite the journey with this one, but I am gonna keep it. I was kind of debating whether I wanted to declutter it or not, but I do think that I am going to keep this. I like it enough and it was just, it was a favorite for so long. The discontinued one that I pulled is the Lancome Tint Idol Ultra Wear. I have the shade 215 Buff Neutral. Now this isn't discontinued, but they did reformulate it. And I think that I'm gonna declutter this. I didn't reach for this one time and I really didn't want to. So I just don't see a reason to keep it in my collection. When I purchased this, it was when this foundation first released quite a long time ago. And there were a lot of sponsored videos on this. So that's why I ended up picking it up. And I knew when I bought this that it just wasn't the kind of foundation that I would enjoy. I don't know. So I'm just, I'm going to get rid of it. I just know out of all the foundations, like I'm just not going to reach for it. I maybe should have like given it a chance. I just, I have so many foundations in my collection that I really don't need to settle for anything subpar that I just don't want to reach for. So I think that I am going to toss this. It's too old for me to just give to someone else, unfortunately. So Money wasted, lesson learned, hopefully. Then the two other ones that I have are the L'Oreal Age Perfect 4-in-1 Tinted Balm. This was one of the very first videos I did on my channel. And the first shade that I picked up was 20 Light. 
and it is so, so orange. So I ended up doing a follow-up video because I believe I did not give this a good review and picking up the shade 20 Fair. This shade is much better for me, although it is like a smidge light, considering I'm probably at my lightest right now. It's fine. I have like some powders that have a little bit of color to it, so I could cancel it out a little bit. Um, I like this. I don't love it. I am going to keep it though, because eventually I want to do a roundup video of all my L'Oreal foundations. So I'm going to keep it for that, but I'm only going to keep Fair 20 and I'm going to just declutter Light 20. It'll never work for me. It's just, this shade is so, so off. I, I can't even see anyone that it would work for because the undertone is just so terrible. I'm not sure if you have this and you love it. I would love to hear the shade specifically. As far as the formula goes, it's not terrible. It's still not my favorite. I like the Age Perfect Serum Foundation more, which is why I originally picked it up because I liked that one so much. It's, it's just... A little bit too glowy which happens to be fine because like I said I have to set this with a powder so it ends up working out my favor but I don't think I would recommend it on the fact that for me it's just a little bit overly glowy if you have dry skin mature skin I could see you really really liking this but you'd have to really like a glowy base to like it and then my favorite out of the four was the KVD Good Apple. I have the shade Light 018. Also have a video of this on my channel. This was my favorite. I don't go for full coverage too often. This is just such a beautiful, natural, full coverage foundation. I really like it. I think you can see how much I used it. 90% of the videos that you saw, probably I was wearing this foundation, if I had to guess. It looks really nice on camera. It's not as long wearing as I would like it to be for a full coverage. I kind of found that it didn't break apart, but it kind of emphasized my texture on my cheeks just after eight to nine hours. So it's not long, long wearing, but it's decent and it is a full coverage foundation that I can just rely on, especially like when I want to film videos and just have a really nice base. It doesn't look too drying or cakey on the skin and it really does give full coverage. I had the newer version of the KVD, the serum one, and I ended up decluttering that because I didn't like it. And for me, the original is the best out of the two. Moving on to concealer, I only had one. This is the JCAT Stayurance Water Sealed Zero Smudge Concealer. I have the shade Buff. This is a really, really nice concealer. This I would recommend. I mean, it's drugstore, it's full coverage, it's hydrating, it doesn't look cakey on the skin. I really enjoy this concealer a lot. Did I just call this a foundation? I meant concealer, you know what I mean. It is a little teeny bit darker than what I would want a concealer to be for me in summertime. This would be great. Luckily, I had something to just combat the darkness and kind of really brighten and lighten it up. But I can't say enough good things about this concealer. It kind of, I think, got forgotten about with just all the new concealer launches. But this is a top one for me that you can find at the drugstore. And for the price, like I would repurchase this over and over again. You even get like a good amount of product. I mean, this is a lot in here. It doesn't say how much is in here, but I can tell this is like a big, big tube. So I'm going to continue to use this. Definitely not going to declutter. And I love having it in my collection. For powder, I picked two, but they're the same brand. So both from Huda Beauty. This <laughs> Easy Bake Powder has been in my collection for an embarrassingly amount, long amount of time. I have the shade Pound Cake. And you know, I thought that I had used this quite a bit but like you can't even see any kind of line i used to bake with this when baking was popular i haven't reached for it in a while because i've kind of been straying away from powder which is why i brought it back in and like i'm just surprised this is gonna last me my entire life and then i have the mini of the cherry blossom thank goodness it's a mini and this is what i used under my eyes i'm wearing it today in 
conjunction with the concealer and that kind of helped lightened it up. This is the first pink powder that I've tried that I do enjoy. I also have the Dominique Cosmetics and that one was just a little too pink for me. This is not too brightening and I love the just travel version of this. I think it's like easy, compact, like it is a tiny bit messy, but you have the little puff with it. So super convenient to travel with. And this is a nice powder. You really have to be careful. Like it's not something I would wear with a full coverage foundation, but happy that I have this and it does have a place in my collection. I don't have too many powders like this that I can really bake with. So I do like having it, but man, there is just, there's so much product in here. I can't believe it. And then that brings me to cheek products, bronzer, blush, and highlight. Let's talk about bronzer first. I have a cream and a powder. The cream, I brought in my Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin in medium. I have a video on this as well. I do wish I had gotten fair or light, whatever the lighter one is, because this runs so much darker than the powder bronzer, which in that I have medium, so I thought I'd be medium. Anyways, I can make it work. I'm wearing it today. And this product's really grown on me. I'm actually surprised I haven't hit pan because the pan is so wide and shallow versus like skinnier and deep, I guess. But, you know, you can see some use on this. I really do like it. I just wish I had gotten a different shade because I think it would fit me a little bit better. It'd be a lot more room for error if I had the lighter one, but this is fine. I'll keep using it. And then the powder bronzer I brought in was the Dior bronzer, the Dior Forever Natural Bronze in 03 Soft Bronze. I'm actually, I'm happy with how much you can see I use this. It's, maybe it's not that much, but this was the only bronzer I've used in the last month. And I finally pretty much wore away the Dior logo on the front. It did get hard pan pretty often. I had to take tape to remove the hard pan, but I don't think it's the formula. I'm starting to think with just the amount of hard pans that I'm getting that I used to not get previously that it's because where I live, it is just really, really humid inside the house. It's a very old stone farmhouse and it gets we, we deal with like a lot of humidity here versus where I used to live, which was 100% dry in Arizona. So I think that that's what's causing hard pan in so many of my products. It just doesn't make sense otherwise. So I'm not going to fault it for that. If you get hard pan in this and you have this, let me know down below. But I'm thinking that's what the culprit is. Um, Back to the formula, though. This actually isn't my favorite bronzer and I think that I'm gonna declutter it. I've been pretty lucky like the past couple of months. I've had some pretty staple products in this round, like a few duds. I just, I have to be cutthroat with my collection and if I'm not gonna reach for it, if I don't love it, I'm gonna find someone who will give it a better home. It's a little bit more on the orange side for me. It was a little bit tough to pick up. Um, and I just, I don't like the tone and it's just not my favorite. I just, that's it. I used it for a month. Like I really gave it a shot. I want to keep it because I love Dior so much. They're probably my favorite luxury brand overall, but it's just not hitting that. Like it's not bringing me that joy that we're supposed to have in our products. So I think, I think it's going to go. On to blush for my cream. I finally pulled in. This was unopened in my collection. This Winky Lux flower blush. I mean, we've all seen this. It was super popular. I have a shade Tea Time and for some reason I didn't want to use it because I didn't want to mess up the flower. But I have to say, like, if you have this and you haven't used it, use it. This is the most beautiful color ever. I really, really enjoyed this color so much. So like, I don't want to put it back. I really, I'm going to, but part of me wants to keep it out and keep using it and like use it all the way up. I don't even care about the flower imprint because the color is so beautiful and it was a really nice base for any blush that I put on. So very happy with that. I know they also have a highlighter 
in with the flower, but I'm not going to pick it up. I hate this ball packaging. It just doesn't fit in my collection that great. If I didn't love the formula, I honestly would maybe declutter it on the packaging alone, but I do really, really like this formula. It's just, it has like a nice stiffness to it. It's not too emollient and not too slippy. It's just a nice base, like I, I said, and it's a nice matte blush. And I like using this as like a first layer. For the two powders, I don't know why I picked two, but I did. I picked the NARS blush in Behave, which is really just like a neutral, cool blush. Really nothing special, but a beautiful formula. NARS has really nice blushes. I really do enjoy their blush formula. And then this other one is from Surratt and it is the shade Sheller. So I kind of had like a warm one and a neutral pinky one, just depending on how my makeup was for the day. I am wearing Shower today, not Behave. This one I wore in a lot of videos, but I wanted to wear this one, and I think it also looks really nice on top of that Winky Lux. It kind of just changes the tone to be more neutral rather than that sunburnt look. So I really like both of these. I'm gonna hang on to them. I bought this so, so long ago on the recommendation of Kathleen Lights. I mean, a long time ago. It's embarrassing. I'm going to continue to use it though and just get my money's worth out of this little teeny tiny thing. And then my only highlight was the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude Glow. This is like a baked gelée formula. You can't really tell that I used it because it's baked. Really like this. I know not everyone loved it, but for me... Being that this is my only Natasha Denona single highlight, I'm pretty sure if I have any others, they're in palettes. I like it. It's borderline leaning too dark for me. I mean, I'm wearing it today. I don't think it looks too dark, but if I layer this, it's going to cause a cast, at least in winter time. So I do have to be careful, but I liked using this. No complaints about the formula. I liked a baked gelée formula. It was nice to put it in my inner corner when I didn't have an inner corner in a palette. And overall, like no complaints. Would I go out and repurchase this? Like, no, I don't think it's special enough, but I do like it. I like pulling it out for this video series and getting some use out of it. And then we just have eyes and lips left. So let's go over my eyeshadow palettes. I brought in my YSL quad in 100 Stora Dolls. I've been seeing more and more people talk about these quads, which makes me really excited because they are a fantastic formula. I mean, I only have one. I'm assuming the other color stories are also fantastic, but this is like just that quad you can rely on to get that beautiful, sophisticated luxury look. I have nothing bad to say about this. I would repurchase this over and over again if I used it all. I rely on this a lot when I just don't know what I want to wear and it just gives the prettiest look. I could see myself traveling with this one. I'm not gonna pick up any of the other color stories because they are pretty expensive and none of the other color stories really call to me like this one does. There is like, I think a pinky one that like I, I almost convinced myself to get, but I'm not going to. I'm happy with this though. If you're looking for a luxury quad recommendation, 100% this over Chanel, over Dior, over all of them. I'm very happy that I picked this up. And then the last two that I have are both from NARS. These were unopened in my collection as well, just waiting to be tested. The first one is the Orgasm Quad which looks like this. These pans have so much shadow in them. I have no idea how I'm going to finish it. This was okay. You know, I didn't use it too often, like three or four times. You get a solid look out of it. Is it that unique in my collection? Not really. Like this is kind of similar vibes to Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Quad. And overall, like I wouldn't repurchase this. But back then, I don't know what I was thinking. I, I did anyway, so I'm going to keep using it. I like it enough to not declutter it, so it's all right for now. Maybe in the future I'll declutter it, but I do want to hang on to it for now. This one is the, this has six pans, and this is in the shade Suede. So it's just a brown, kind of neutral color story. This is the one that I'm wearing today. I don't 
want to declutter this, but I think that I'm going to. The issue with this is that I have really over the past year been trying more and more indie shadows and this just doesn't compete for me. And really the deciding factor, that's why I wore it today to just really make up my mind about it, is that most of these shades are just too dark for me to use every day. Like this is kind of more of a smoky event quad. If I was going to pull out this quad, I couldn't really pull it out for every day because this is the lightest matte in the palette. And you know, this was fine. I used this as liner. So I used this today, the shade on the inner half of my lid, this one on the outer half of my lid. I didn't use this, I didn't use this. And then, like I said, I used this as liner. So, you know, I think I got a light-ish look, but I just don't love it. For a neutral quad, there's so many that I would reach for over this. And I think specifically, like this is supposed to be a travel quad, a travel six pan. Because it's small, it's sleek, and it's just not something I would travel with. And that's why I think I'm going to find someone who will just love it more. It has great neutrals. I know someone will get their use out of it. It's just not me. And I wish that I would keep it like part of me does want to keep it just to have it. But I know I would never reach for this if I had a day where, you know, I wasn't testing something and I could wear whatever I want. Like this would be so low on the list for me to grab for. So it's just not worth keeping it around. So I am going to declutter it. Formula's fine. I mean, again, like the shimmers aren't that impactful. I wouldn't recommend it. I'm just, I'm trying to decide. It's not bad. It's not good, but I wouldn't recommend it and I'm going to declutter it. So that's that. And then let's quickly breeze through these lip products here and we'll pick out new products. Let's go with this lone wolf here. This is the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lip in the shade Ginger. When I first tried these, I actually really hated them. I just kind of wanted to get some use out of them. But this past month, I've grown to really like it. And I figured out the reason why is because in winter time, it's so much colder in my house that this formula is so much more firm. I think when I had them last time that I pulled them out and used them, it was summertime. So it was so just liquidy and emollient and it, I felt like it slipped and slide. I'm pretty sure I even said that when I talked about these. So this is just a formula I would not recommend for summer. Definitely don't keep this in your purse. Definitely don't keep this in your car during summertime. It will be a huge mess. But in wintertime, fall time, springtime, I'm sure that these are fine. And now I at least somewhat understand the hype about these because at first I bought like a Tarte holiday gift set last year. And that's how I ended up with four of these. And once I tried them, I was like, crap, like I have four of these now. They're brand new and I don't love them. But now, now I understand. Now I get it. And then the last three that I picked were all from Lisa Eldridge. The first one was the Velveteen in Fawn. This is what I'm wearing today with a lip liner. I freaking love this so much. It's one of my favorite lipsticks. It's definitely my favorite formula from Lisa Eldridge. It just doesn't move. It's so long lasting. It's so comfortable on the lips. You can put something a little bit glossy if you don't want it to be matte. It's right here. It is not the same shade as Velvet Fawn if you're looking for like an exact color dupe. I think this is a little bit darker than Velvet Fawn, but I love it. I do want to pick up more shades of these. However, I'm, I'm putting myself on a lipstick no-buy for the unforeseeable future, at least until I finish up some other lipsticks. And then lastly, I pulled in two velvets. I pulled in Velvet Ribbon since it was kind of holiday time. That just seemed like the classic thing to do. And then I pulled in Velvet Sorcery because this was my newest velvet and it's definitely a fall shade. I didn't wear these as much as the other two, but I did wear them. Here's Ribbon, here is Sorcery. They're just not everyday shades for me. I would kind of take this one, use my finger and then tap it out just to make it a little bit lighter. And then Ribbon, I don't know what it is about Ribbon. I just don't love it as like a classic red. The more I wore it, I don't feel like it pulls just like that classic holiday red to me. It feels 
maybe, and maybe it's just my skin tone, it feels like it pulls a little bit berry, a little bit magenta. I don't know what's in here, like if there's maybe just too much of a red blue undertone or what it is and it's not going with my undertones. I just don't feel like this is my perfect holiday red and that's kind of what I pulled this in for intentionally to kind of be that holiday red but I, I don't know. I'm not loving it. We're gonna see what I'm gonna do with it. I really don't have too many reds in my collection so maybe I'll pull in another one this round and see if that works a little bit better. I have a couple days left in December to just see and wear like a fancy lip color a little bit so I'll maybe give that a shot but I was a little bit disappointed by that shade. I wore it in my five looks one palette for Natasha Denona Xenon. I'll link that below so you can also just see how it looks on me if you're curious and see if you agree with me because I don't know I just, I just didn't think it was like the most flattering on me. And that wraps up all the products that I've been using for the last month. I am decluttering four things. You know, it's bittersweet when you declutter things because I did spend my money on them. But at the same time, I'm glad I'm just not going to have things in my collection that I'm not going to use. And I will find someone who will be able to use it and will love it other than this because it, it's pretty, it's pretty, pretty old. But now that we've talked about all of these, let me turn you around and we'll pick out products for the new month together. Starting with primers, as always, I usually pick out more of a pore blurring primer only because I do have a illuminating primer in my project pan. So here in the front are all open primers and then I have all my unopened in the back here. And I think I want to pull an unopened since the last time I pulled in an opened one. I'm kind of thinking this one. This is the Catrice Prime and Fine Poreless Blur Primer Goodbye Pores because previously, I don't remember, a time or two ago I pulled in this Wet n Wild. I really, really liked it. These packages obviously look almost identical, so I want to see what the difference is. Like, are they both the same? Are they different? Let's just, let's just see what is going on with this one because I've never tried it before. Moving straight along into concealers. This is my opened and this is my unopened. I probably need to switch that now that this is so full, but I am gonna pull in an opened one since I pulled in an unopened primer. And I'll just kind of put these here because I'm gonna switch out this drawer. I think I pulled in this closest like often. I just don't want it to go bad. I'm kind of debating between these two. I think I'm gonna go with the Giorgio Armani. I've had this before in a Shop My Stash, but it is one of the older ones out of all of this, if you can believe that. It's not old, 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 but it's old enough where I'm starting to worry about it and I like it enough where I want to make sure I use some of it before it actually expires. So this is the one I'm gonna pull in. It's just a nice, reliable concealer. For foundation, we're actually gonna switch it up a little bit. I usually, I already explained how I usually pull my foundations, but I do want to pull in all of my NARS. So I have the NARS Light Reflecting, I have the NARS Sheer Glow, and I have the NARS Natural, what is this, Natural Radiant Longwear. These two I have in shade Fiji, and this one I have in Deauville. Then I also have these two unopened, which is the NARS Soft Matte Complete Foundation in Deauville as well. And then the Pure Radiant Tinted Moisturizer in Norwich. I think that this comes in less shades. So I want to do a video ranking all of my NARS foundations because I believe that these are all the ones that they make. I'm pretty sure. And when I did my Maybelline foundation review ranking, I asked which brand you wanted to see next. You said NARS. So that is why I'm going to pull these into Shop My Stash so I can really focus on them and get my thoughts, get my notes, 
and get started with that because if not, I will just focus on the other foundations I bring in and not these ones. Now the powder drawer is just a feeling the most, I don't know, I just, I don't know what it is about this drawer, but there's a lot of these I just don't necessarily want to reach for. I don't want to get rid of them, but I don't want something, you know, tinted like this one. And then this I've pulled in quite a few times. Maybe I'll pull in my meteorites. I don't necessarily love these. I kind of think they're a little bit gimmicky. It's not bad enough where I would declutter it. But I think, yeah, this is what I'm going to pull in just to get some use out of this because I refuse to let this go to waste. It's so expensive. I wanted it for so long. However, just so you know, like I like this Givenchy pressed powder way more than the meteorites. Like you can even see in just the usage, I've almost completely worn away the logo. Don't really love the loose version as much, but I definitely like the pressed more than I like these meteorites, but let's just get some use out of these. They're not bad enough where I hate them. I just find them a little bit difficult and gimmicky. This is my face palette drawer and I don't always pull something from here, but I think I'm going to this time and I'm going to pull something that is unopened. There's actually not too many unopened. Let me see if I can pull this further. Mostly like this corner here. I think I'm going to pull in this Dior Backstage Contour Palette and this will kind of sub in as my powder bronzer and kind of a highlight. I'll still pull a highlight, I think. But this will be my base palette. And then I'm just deciding if I want to do anything else. I kind of do. I'm going to pull this in. So this is the Charlotte Tilbury Holiday Quad from 2022. It has two blushes and two highlighters. So this will take care of blushes and highlighter. And then the Dior will also take care of highlight and bronzer, but I'm still going to pick a cream bronzer and blush just to go with these as well. So let's look at those drawers. I don't have too many cream bronzers and I've, I pull in them and rotate through them pretty frequently. I think this is the one I haven't pulled in the least or since the longest. This is the NARS Laguna bronzer, my favorite cream bronzer. So I should definitely get some use out of it. And it's best in the winter anyways, because it's a little bit cooler, a little bit more contoury. So I'm going to pull this one in. Yes. And get some use out of that. This one. Let's look at blush. Cream blush. This drawer, I talk about it every time, gives me anxiety. Um, what have I not pulled in? And I mostly have powders. Ooh, let's pull this in. This would be the perfect time. I think I got this like, gosh, two holidays ago. I don't know. And I haven't tried it. And I really haven't tried that many Rare Beauty products. I'm going to pull this in. This will be perfect. So this has three blushes. I'm not sure what shades, but I'm sure everyone saw this. This was the first year that Rare Beauty came out with little holiday sets that I purchased this and it's kind of just been sitting back here waiting to be used because I have so much stuff. So it is time that I pulled it in and finally gave it a chance. So let's go with that. I'm not going to pull in a cream highlight because I honestly just don't like cream highlight and I have one in Project Pan. So let's move on to lips. Here is the lip drawer looking a lot messier than you probably saw it last time because I had a few stragglers that my mom brought me from my storage container in Arizona that I didn't really talk about. Um, I'm going to pull in this. This is a Milani Gloss in Luminoso. I think I got this like a free gift with purchase or something. Most of these I have. 
And then the Viseart. No, I'm going to wait on that. What is this? I think this is a buxom gloss. No, it's a pure gloss. I'm going to bring this little pure mini as well. Give this a shot since it's unopened. Ooh, this I got, I think, as a free gift with purchase. This is a Giorgio Armani lipstick in 102. I want to say when I looked at this, it was like a nude. Yeah. So that'll be perfect to go with some glosses. And then the last one, I think I'm going to bring that's just unopened. Not this. Let's back here more. I don't want to bring another gloss. I guess I'll bring this liquid lip. This is just a mini Ofra lipstick in Mocha. We'll see. Kind of looks like my shade. So that way I have a lipstick, a liquid lipstick, and two glosses. I think that'll be great. We just have eyeshadow left, and I really am undecided on what I want to do. But I think... I think that I figured it out. I'm hoping that I won't regret it. I don't want to pull in something that I haven't tried yet, only because I've already pulled enough. I want to actually use something that I've used before. So I think that I want to use way down here my Natasha Denona Star Palette, because this is pretty old. And I think that it will give me like a lot of good holiday looks. I really like the tones in here. Like I love this shade, this shade, this shade. Then we kind of have like some darker stuff here. So I think this will be a really nice palette. And then I also want to pull in one more. Let me just put all this back in a nice Tetris way. Uh, through there. The other one I want to pull this is kind of like my Pat McGrath drawer, is the quad in Ritualistic Rose that has the four Blitz Astral shades, and it's the more pinky one, if I can open it. So it looks like this. So this kind of gives me like some shimmer. I can still reach into any other palettes if I want to. I don't really like love this one, but I love this one, this one, this one super pretty that gives me a little bit something extra a little bit something holiday for the next month and i think those are the only two because i do have a lot from my black friday haul if you haven't seen that video i'll link it up above and down below but i have a lot of those to just like get through and get my thoughts on so i'm gonna leave it pretty simple for eyeshadow so now that i've picked out all my products let me just show you everything and we'll do a quick recap so here's everything that I have for the next month or so. I'm pretty happy with all these choices. There's maybe like a few things that are new that are unopened more than I would like to in a normal shop my stash, but it's fine. It's holiday time. My birthday's in January, so I get to try all this new stuff for my birthday. And I'm excited to just get some more use, especially out of this Natasha palette, the Charlotte Tilbury quad I love. And these NARS foundations, like I've been having this on my list to do forever, just really getting my thoughts on all of them. A little bit nervous about the shades, especially in summer, because these Fiji ones would fit me in Arizona. Kind of like an in-between. I don't know. I'll figure it out. But this is what we're working with for the next month. Thanks again for watching. Hopefully you liked it. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up, and I will see you in my next one. Bye, everyone.